okay now this section is regarding disorder of basal ganglia so by now we have learned that basal gang ganglia connections are direct pathway and indirect pathway via direct pathway it stimulates the movement pattern and via indirect it inhibits so if there is any abnormality within the direct pathway what will happen there will be reduced movement right because direct was stimulating the movement so any lesion within the direct pathway will reduce the movement intensity timing everything will get reduced so this loop one loop one means lesion in the loop one means lesion in the direct pathway or here in this slide loop one means it depicts direct pathway so there will be hypokinetic disorder hypokinesia means reduced intensity that hypokinetic movement are of two type either there will be total absence of the movement or very difficult to start the movement that is called as akinesia and the second one is bradykinesia bradykinesia means there will be reduced movement or slowness slowness of the movement that happens akinesia and bradykinesia because of the lesion within direct pathway if the indirect pathway that is the loop 2 if it gets affected then what was indirect pathway was doing indirect was inhibiting the movement so if we cut the indirect pathway that inhibition part will be lost there will be exaggerated movement and those exaggerated movement are called as hyperkinetic disorder and these are few of the names given to the hyperkinetic disorder depending on what kind of that movement is one is athetosis other one is bellismus there is chorea there is torsion spasm there are so many others now this athetosis and that um, let me say this is the drawback of um, this kind of a teaching if there is a live teaching then i can show you by performing what kind of the movement what does it mean athetosis athetosis is but so what you do you try to uh, search for these terms on the youtube okay athetosis there will be a video of athetosis movement how it happens so athetosis is like wriggling kind of serpentine movement jab aap koi movement perform karna chahoge to aap jaise serpentine movement hai us tarah se aapki limb movement hogi that is the athetosis then there is bellismus what is bellismus bellismus is like flinging type of the limb movement of the arm or the leg aapka haath hai jaise aapka फ्लिंज हो रहा है झटका लग रहा है ओके दैट इज दिस बेलिस मस्ट दिस पार्ट ऑल दिस मूवमेंट डिसऑर्डर दे आर मेनली ऑफ द डिस्टल पार्ट डिस्टल लेम्स लाइक इधर ऑफ द आर्म और ऑफ द लेग मूवमेंट देन देर इज कोरिया कोरिया दिस इज नॉट साउथ कोरिया नॉर्थ कोरिया दिस इज सी सी कोरिया कोरिया इज ए ग्रीक वर्ड इट इज ग्रीक वर्ड फॉर डांस सो इफ you are not a good dancer not a good dancer means you are not a dancer at all and if your friend forces you to dance what kind of the dance movement you will perform that is the choreo so choreo means you try to perform the dance but you don't know even the abcd of the dance so there will be involuntary muscle activity choreo literally means involuntary muscle activity that flow from one muscle group to the another what is dance dance is coordinated movement of one group of the muscle first they will perform their action then the second group of the muscle will do either the flexion of the arm or the extension or the flexor of the forearm then flexion of the arm that is the coordinated movement called as dance aap koshish to wahi karoge coordination mein flow karoge one group of movement to other but it is not smooth that is called as choreo torsion spasm it's kind of like से अब आपने एक साइड मूव गर्दन मोड़ ली है लेफ्ट साइड ओके लेफ्ट साइड मूवमेंट कर ली आपने गर्दन की और आप उसको सेंटर में लाना चाह रहे हो आ ही नहीं रही है वो एक साइड की तरफ टॉर्सन हो गई स्पाजमोटिक मूवमेंट हो गई है दैट इज आल्सो ड्यू टू द लीजन विद इन द इनडायरेक्ट मीन्स एग्जेजरेट मूवमेंट दीज आर काइंड ऑफ द हाइपर कानेटिक मूवमेंट वन बाई वन वी विल कवर लाइक इन वट डिजीज दिस काइंड ऑफ द मूवमेंट विल हैपन एंड वाई इट इज हैपनिंग ओके 
So first and foremost, the major disease concerned with the basal ganglia is Parkinson's disease or Parkinsonism. This was described by James Parkinson. So it has been named after him and this is also known as paralysis agitans. Paralysis agitans means because of the symptoms of weakness of the muscle power in tremor or because of this thing shaky tremor it is also known as shaking palsy. Shaking palsy or paralysis agitans or Parkinsonism or just Parkinson disease is one and same thing. Now what is the pathology within the Parkinsonism? There is degeneration of dopaminergic neuron in substantia nigra pars compacta degeneration of this moment okay so if there is happening degeneration of the dopaminergic in the substantia nigra pars compacta what will happen the substantia nigra pars compacta was acting on it was sending the it has got the dopaminergic neurons right and those dopamine neurotransmitter they were released and acting on the D1 receptor and D2 receptor within the striatum right. So it was involved in both the direct pathway as well as indirect pathway. So it will have both the hypokinetic as well as hyperkinetic feature both the hypokinetic as well as hyperkinetic feature. Now hypokinetic features are a kinesia and bradykinesia that will happen within the Parkinson's disease and hyperkinetic will be rigidity and tremor. Now in detail tremor will be at rest and rigidity will be Cogwheel rigidity type that we will cover like what is Cogwheel rigidity and what is tremor at the rest and all these things mean. See this diagram this one depicts very good way of the things what will happen in basal ganglia pathology within the Parkinsonism disease. See the, this is a normal pathway this is normal cycle okay and this is what will happen if there is lesion within substantia nigra compacta pars compacta why because the Parkinsonism is degeneration of the dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra pars compacta. So first look at this diagram on the left side these dashed line means inhibitory and solid arrow means excitatory that we are well aware of we have done this pathway multiple times. So one more time like in the normal what is happening from the cortex to striatum putamen this has shown as putamen only why because within this Parkinsonism disease the striatum putamen part of the striatum is mainly concerned it is the most severely affected part. So that is why they have shown the putamen only. So you can depict it as striatum 2 otherwise you will get confused sometime putamen sometimes striatum ok. So just put it as striatum. So from the cortex it goes to the striatum from the striatum direct pathway is globus pallidus internus and then thalamus where is thalamus this part forget about this this line this part just this pathway thalamus and then back to the cortex that was the direct and indirect was this one from the striatum it was going to the externals then subthalamic nucleus from the subthalamic nucleus it is going to globus pallidus internus and then back to the thalamus via this pathway. Now what is happening is in the Parkinsonism Parkinsonism this substantia nigra compacta is getting affected. I, I said the solid line means excitatory and dashed line means inhibitory and the third thing is the thickness of the line is strength it is showing the strength. So more thicker the solid line more and more number of the excitation like more intense excitation is happening. So when we remove this substantia nigra compacta part this pathway this direct pathway this dashed line it gets thinned out what does it mean it means there is very less inhibition on the globus pallidus internus if there is less inhibition these neurons will release more and more inhibited neurons to the thalamus that is why this dashed line becomes solid and the output from the thalamus that is supposed to be stimulatory on the cortex it is getting reduced in intensity very thin solid line as compared to the normal one right very thin that is why there is hypokinesia akinesia and bradykinesia is happening 
akinesia and bradykinesia. Now, why this hyperkinesia is happening? Hyperkinesia we can say, see, I said within the this thing the GABA neurons are there, substantia nigra, pars compacta, mainly there were GABA neurons, but there was acetylcholine too, right? Acetylcholine part was also there. And what does this acetylcholine part do? We can say these cholinergic neuron, what did I just now said? I said, I think I said substantia nigra parts compactor, no, not compactor, striatum I was talking about. So, cholinergic neuron that present within the striatum, they have got total opposite effect of the dopamine pathway. What does it mean? It means substance and this acetylcholine, it inhibits the excitation of the cortex from the thalamus or we can say it drives the indirect pathway. So, if dopamine control is lost, the pathology within the Parkinsonism is the dopamine neuron, right? The dopaminergic neuron in the substantia nigra pars compacta. If that dopamine control is reduced, that acetylcholine pathway will enhance and that will also make these hypokinetic and hyperkinetic movement, there will be the rigidity and tremor at rest, right. Okay. Now, what all the symptoms will be there? There will be absence of the motor activity or the absence of the motor activity is called as akinesia or if there is difficulty in the initiating that is bradykinesia, slowness, absence or difficulty in initiation this those these two terms they are same for the definition of the akinesia either total absence or difficulty and bradykinesia is slowness right and then there is decrease in the normal and conscious movement such as swinging of the arm during walking facial expression to the emotional content of the thought and speech like the there won't be any uh, automated associated movements like swinging of the arms while walking and facial expression while talking so there will be typical feature is called as mask face. There will be mask face in Parkinsonism that is one of the symptoms you can write it down. Then there will be total absence of the swinging of the arm when a person suffering from Parkinsonism is walking. And then there will be few fidgety actions like irregular unwanted movement might happen and some sort of the gestures will be there. Okay, some sort of the gestures will be there. Now, these just imagine a person, a old age person who is suffering from Parkinsonism disease because this is a degenerative disease. So, it mainly affects after the 60 age group. Okay, there are, there are few cases which might not be due to the degeneration like aging process, some sorry, some genetic or inherited disorder. So, in those persons it might start very early in the mid age or kind of a thing, then do not it will not be like old age. So, you cannot exclusively say this is the exclusive disease of the old age, but if it is due to the degeneration it is old age. So, just imagine uh, an old age person he is moving, how will be the like gait of a moving old age person? First of all it will be like stooping forward flexed kind of right. Second thing will be those step he takes, those steps will be very small small steps right, small steps and just imagine you are moving with wearing a very oversized slipper. Hawaii chappal jo aap oversized pen ke chalte ho to aap kya kaise koshish karte ho jab chal ke dekhte ho gate mein. It is kind of a shuffling gate means you are just imagine you are bent forward and you are wearing those oversized hawaii chappals or usse aap jo movement karoge leg ki chote chote there will be very small step shuffling gait small step and you will be lean forward as if you are trying to catch the center of the gravity chote chote step ke saath shuffle karte hue gait chale just imagine that is called as typical Parkinson gait or fascinating gait.
that is called as where is this thing that gate is called as fascinating gate okay mm. fascinating gate okay and shuffling gate shuffling gate okay shuffling gate and there will be rigidity rigidity what is rigidity there are two terms one is rigidity other one is spasticity spasticity this one a bit of the spasticity we have talked about this in motor system spasticity is due to the pyramidal track lesion and rigidity is that is the difference between the spasticity and rigidity rigidity is due to the extra pyramidal lesion and what are pyramidal pyramidal lesion are the pathways the tracks those are forming the pyramid within the brain stem and those pathways are corticospinal tracks corticospinal tracks and extra pyramidal is rest of the pathway like those cortex is sending the, so the basal ganglia just remember the basal ganglia is the one that is concerned with the extra pyramidal tract okay so the extra pyramidal tract is lesion within the extra pyramidal tract is causing the rigidity lesion in pyramidal tract is causing spasticity okay and spasticity what is happening only one group of the muscle is getting affected that is the major difference either there will be affected part as agonist group or the antagonist like either the flexor group of the muscle will get affected will be hypertonic more contraction within the flexor or in the extension group in the case of the rigidity there will be both the agonist as well as the antagonist muscle they are involved so total overall uniform hypertonia in general attitude of the flexion of the limb will be there in the case of the spasticity okay that is the difference between spasticity and oh, sorry that uh, general hypertonia of both the agonist and antagonist will happen in rigidity not in the spasticity so over here because this is the extra pyramidal tract getting affected there will be the rigidity so what is this this motor neuron discharge mn means motor neuron discharge it increases to both the agonist as well as antagonist muscles now rigidity can be of two type lead pipe rigidity or cogwheel rigidity lead pipe rigidity is just imagine when you have got a lead pipe ek aapke paas lohe ki pipe hai aap usko bend karna cha rahe ho to aap usko bend karoge effort lagaoge starting from the starting point to the end point till the end point you have to apply the force right throughout the movement that is the lead pipe rigidity that kind of the rigidity passive motion of an extremity meets with plastic dead feeling resistance like bending a lead pipe the second one is cogwheel rigidity means sometimes a series of catch takes place during passive motion just imagine aapke paas you have taken like say let me try to this thing cycle ka pahiya hai cycle wheel there are the spokes right there are the spokes when you press this part and compare to this one you press this part this in between spokes where will be more resistance the resistance will be more when you press at this part spoke part right so you have started like applying the resistance from this throughout so initially there will be very resistance in between part this green area there will be very less resistance then again increased resistance then less resistance so this is called as cogwheel rigidity in between there will be those catch like situation where it will become easier so aap just imagine aap arm ko flex kar rahe ho forearm ko flex kar rahe ho 
एक है थ्रू आउट द मोमेंट आपको रेजिस्टेंस अप्लाई करना पड़ रहा है मतलब रेजिस्टेंस अप्लाई नहीं द पर्सन यू आर फ्लैक्सिंग द आर्म ऑफ ए पर्सन एंड उसमें रेजिस्टेंस प्रोवाइड कर रहा है वो थ्रू आउट द रेंज ऑफ द मो मोशन ठीक है दैट इज द लेट पाइप रेजिडिटी कोव व्हील रेजिडिटी में क्या है आपने स्टार्ट किया इनिशियल रेजिस्टेंस है फिर हल्का सा झटका लगा कम रेजिस्टेंस है फिर दोबारा रेजिस्टेंस है फिर हल्का झटका लगा सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एज कोक व्हील रेजिडिटी सो मेनली इन द केस ऑफ दिस पार्किसनिज्म केस देर इज कोक व्हील रेजिडिटी बट समाइम्स लेट पाइप रेजिडिटी ऑल्सो डू हैपन बट रिमेम द कोक व्हील रेजिडिटी हैपन इन दिस वन देन देर इज ए ट्रेमर ट्रेमर इज वट इज ट्रेमर ट्रेमर इज इन वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट ऑफ द डिस्टल लिम्स इन द केस ऑफ द डिस्टल लिम्स वी कैन से द फिंगर्स फिंगर्स की आपकी इन वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट होती रहती है रिदमिक कंटिन्यूस इट माइट नॉट बी रिदमिक इट मे बी ए रिदमिक बट इन वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट सो दैट इन वॉलेंट्री मूवमेंट दैट ट्रेमर इट इज फर्दर सब डिवाइडेड इन टू इधर इट इज हैपनिंग एट द रेस्टिंग कंडीशन और समटाइम्स वेन यू परफॉर्म इन द रेस्टिंग आप आराम से बैठे हो देर इज नो ट्रेमर मूवमेंट बट वेन एवर यू स्टार्ट टू परफॉर्म एनी एक्शन then there will be the tremor and that is further subdivided while at the initiating the movement or when you are reaching out that end of the movement at that time tremor is happening so different different depending on different pathology but parkinsonism in the case of the parkinsonism the tremor will be at rest resting tremor and as soon as you start performing any movement or any motor activity it will disappear and what is the characteristic tremor within the parkinsonism it will be pill rolling just imagine aapne haath mein ek tablet de di hai aur usko lena hai aap baat karne lag gaye ho beech mein to kya karte ho aapne ungliyon mein le rakhi hai ungliyon mein rotate karte rehte ho na pill ko roll kar rahe ho jaise us type ki pill rolling movement hota hai that is characteristic tremor of this parkinsonism pill rolling pill rolling tremor okay pill rolling tremor and it will present at rest and disappear with the activity it is due to regular alternating eight heart contraction of the antagonistic muscles okay so we can say what are the features of this um, parkinsonism disease one is a kinesia or bradykinesia ए बी इधर ए कानेशिया और ब्रेडी कानेशिया देन देर विल बी रिजिडिटी कोग व्हील और लेड पाइप मेनली कोग व्हील रिजिडिटी देन देर इज ट्रेमर ट्रेमर दैट इज अ रेस्टिंग ट्रेमर पिल रोलिंग एंड देन वट अबाउट द गेट फेस्टिनेटिंग गेट और शफलिंग गेट ओके शफलिंग स्टोव फॉरवर्ड और शफल टाइप ऑफ गेट होता है यू जस्ट Google it, not the Google. Okay, Google it or search it in the YouTube. Like the gait in Parkinsonism. उसमें आपको दिखा देंगे किस तरह से Parkinsonism. The person will be bent forward, stoop forward, taking very small, small steps, trying to catch as if the center of gravity is very forward, and he is trying to catch that thing. That kind of the gait will be there. These are the typical features of Parkinsonism. now what can be the etiology mostly most important it is age related degenerative it can happen due to the infection viral encephalitis the encephalitis is inflammation of the brain parenchyma due to the virus degenerative both due to the aging as well as genetic predisposition <coughs> some of the persons who are suffering from the genetic predisposition in those persons it will appear early in the lifetime okay then there is drug induced parkinsonism drug induced there is no need to go into detail these drug induced are like antipsychotic drug antipsychotic drug the mechanism of action of parkinsonism induced due to the antipsychotic drug is antipsychotic affect the dopamine receptor they inhibit them okay so if these dopamine receptor are getting inhibited obviously there will be those movement disorder okay dopamine receptor is inhibited acetylcholine will get hyper excited and then ultimately it will end up in drug induced parkinsonism antipsychotic drug okay antipsychotic drug and what about the genetic predisposition genetic predisposition is like there are few of the <coughs> see there is ubiquitin proteasome complex pathway this i have covered in very earlier classes 
in a normal cell the protein after performing its action it is supposed to if during that action performance it gets like damaged or if it is supposed to get discarded off disposed of it will go to the proteasome proteasome is kind of a dusting bean of a particular cell so all the proteins which are either abnormal or they have performed their action they are aging they are supposed to recycle it will get recycled from the proteasome and they won't proteasome won't directly as soon as the protein enters over there it won't take them and break it down no it needs a stamp ek stamp lagi hui honi chahiye tabhi proteasome kahega ha aap wahan se register ho ke aaye ho tabhi main aapko break down karunga and that stamping or register that is happening with the help of the ubiquity so any particular protein which is supposed to get discarded off or broken down into its elementary particles it has to get ubiquitinated ubiquitin attached protein will enter the proteasome and then proteasome will break it down split it into the products okay so sometimes these protein they will either be abnormal or the abnormality will be like their concentration or the amount of the abnormal protein will be so high that it will overwhelm the ubiquitin so if they are not getting stamped with the ubiquitin they won't get broken down if they are not getting broken down what is happening they will get accumulated within the cell so they will affect the molecular trafficking within the cell and cell will ultimately die earlier than the normal okay and that is called as the degeneration happening due to genetic predisposition that can happen in any kind of the disease like the parkinsonism and then there is one more disease that we will talk today only that is the huntington disease okay so that is the main parkinson etiology and there is happening the degeneration of the substantia nigra loss of dopamine is happening increased inhibitory output of the basal ganglia is resulting the hypokinetic and hyperkinetic was due to the increased excitatory so that balance is disturbed decreased dopamine leads to imbalance in the ratio of the cholinergic transmission and dopaminergic effect the nigrostriatal dopamine inhibits the acetylcholine secreting corticosteroid neurons so in absence of the dopaminergic inhibition there is increased cholinergic transmission effect and these are the features rigidity akinesia tremor and fascinating gait that fascinating gait is shuffle gait we can say the rigidity as we have covered this one it can be cog wheel or lead pipe mainly cog wheel and face like yes these things in this one is also one of the features in the akinesia you can say mask like faces there will be total absence of the expression as if the robot is talking and difficulty in the initiating the movement will be there and then there will be the absence of the swinging of the arms and few of the minor symptoms they can also happen the micrographia means handwriting letters they will be small in the size the font size will size will get reduced and become progressively smaller jo uski normal aapka ek हैंड राइटिंग होती है आपका फोन साइज जो नॉर्मल होता है उससे डिक्रीज होता जाएगा विद डिपेंडिंग ऑन दैट पर्सन नॉर्मल फोन साइज पुअर्टी ऑफ द मोमेंट इन स्पीच एंड ऑल दीज थिंग्स ओके सो पार्किसन रेस्टिंग ट्रेमर वट इज पिकल फीचर दे आर द कोर्स ट्रेमर एट रेस्ट डिसअपियर ड्यूरिंग मोमेंट पिल रोलिंग काइंड ऑफ द मोमेंट विल हैपन ओके दिस इज अबसेंट इन द स्लीप इन द स्लीपिंग फेज दिज रेस्टिंग ट्रेमर दे आर अबसेंट okay this is happening due to the loss of inhibition of the thalamus and relieved by the lesion that is like how you will treat it fascinating gait this we covered short rapid shuffling step lack of the associated movement such as swinging of the arm and in very severe stage there can be the retropulsion or propulsion that is inability to stop it will be like we can say it's hard to start and hard to stop अगर आपने बोला है कि आपको यहाँ से यहाँ तक मूव करना है वो पर्सन विल ट्राई टू स्टॉप बट इट वॉन्ट स्टॉप एट दैट पर्टिकुलर डेजिग्नेटेड टाइम और प्लेस थोड़ा सा आगे चला जाएगा ओके दैट इज अ रिट्रोपल्सन एंड प्रोपल्सन एंड दिस इज द ट्रीटमेंट पार्ट वी कैन ईडर ट्रीट इट बाई प्रोवाइडिंग द डोपामीन और ब्रोमोक्रिप्टीन दैट इज डोपामीन एगोनिस्ट ओके देर इज नो नीड टू गो इन डिटेल दैट इज फॉर द सेकेंड फ्रॉफ एंटीकोलर्जिक ट्रग और सर्जिकल ओके दैट इज अ पार्किसनिज्म 
Now coming to the chorea, chorea I said C for chorea, C for chordate nucleus, it is associated with the chordate and chorea is dance like movement, involuntary, semi purposive, jerky, dance like movement of the hand and figure that will happen and it happens due to the loss of GABAergic neuron. If the GABAergic neurons they are lost in the substantia nigra, <coughs> there will be exaggerated movement. Okay. <coughs> and this exaggerated movement why it is happening? Chorea it can be due to so many types, Sidenham chorea due to the this is throat infection or any post streptococcal infection sequel one of them is Sidenham chorea, second is senile chorea means due to the aging, third is Huntington chorea that is the involuntary movement that is happening with the dementia. Huntington chorea is this is a Huntington disease that is transmitted by autosomal domin dominant, dominant and it is like what is the pathology of the Huntington disease? The pathology is it is kind of we can say CAG trinucleotide repeat cytosine, adenine, guanine. This trinucleotide it will get accumulated like CAG multiple CAG 40, 50 more than normal one. So, this will create gain of function, these proteins, Huntington proteins, they will become abnormal. As I said just now, like if they become abnormal, they are of no use, they are supposed to get broken down via ubiquitin proteasome, they will not get because they are very much large in number, they will not get ubiquitinated, they will get accumulated and ultimately it will result in degeneration of this. <coughs> GABA neurons and this GABA neurons, uh, this disease is of the chordate nucleus, right? Chordate nucleus. So, GABA neuron in the chordate nucleus is happening. And what all the features will be there? Features will be this chordate nucleus is associated with the cognitive function, okay? Cognitive function and mainly it regulates the emotional content, content as well as the motor impulse to the cortex. So, emotional part is getting affected it means there will be behavioral change, mood change will be there, there, be, there might be anxiety or the depression, then there will be the cognitive impairment, kind of the dementia might happen and then major chunk is major characteristic feature is chorea, chorea is jerky, fidgety, involuntary movement, okay, involuntary movement that is happening with the Huntington disease. Athetosis it is like slow reading purposeless movement of the limb and neck like a snake. It happens mainly due to the lesion in the putamen. Other lesion is hemibelismus. Uh, it is easy to remember where hemibelismus is happening, hemi, half and subthalamic. It is happening due to the lesion within the subthalamic nucleus. And it will be kind of like aapne haath ko jhatka diya hai, haath ko ye leg ko, us type ki flailing movement hoegi. And it will happen to on the opposite side. If the left sided subthalamic nucleus is getting affected, this kind of the movement of the hemiballistic movement of the right side will happen. Okay. Now, Wilson disease, Wilson disease is in the it is copper toxicity due to some hereditary disorder, this one genetic predisposition, there will be more and more accumulation of the copper within the body, it is not getting excreted out, so it might get deposited, start depositing within the cells. If it gets deposited within the basal ganglia, then it will create the Wilson, like uh, this movement, no, not the Wilson disease because of the basal ganglia, Wilson disease is entirely this thing, abnormality within the excretion of the copper, copper get accumulated and it will effect, affect different different part, liver will get affected then basal ganglia will also get affected. So, if when it is affecting the basal ganglia, it gets deposited in these nuclei, basal nuclei, there will be movement disorder. Connectoresis, connectoresis RH incompatibility, like uh, you have read about this thing RH incompatibility, the jaundice in the newborn, if that bilirubin, it exceeds a certain limit, it will start depositing it will cause the blood brain barrier and start depositing within the basal ganglia. So, due to that deposition that is called as karmic terrace, that is also the part of basal ganglia disease, that is all regarding the 